Welcome, 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 everyone. Uh, we are in day four of the Content Palooza. If you have missed out on previous days, um, you can find previous days right where you are right now. If you're watching on YouTube, you can find the other days there. Facebook, same thing. Twitter, oh, X. Sorry, I still I can't get over um, calling it X versus Twitter. But you can see all the previous days exactly where you are if you have missed out. And you have missed out if you have not seen the previous days. So you might want to go back and do some binge watching since we're talking about uh, binge worthy content today. Um, this week has been focused all about, um, you know, creating content faster and easier but with a lot more intention. That has been the word of the week. It's like, you know, we all um, throw a lot of content out into the world. Uh, if you are a content um, creator, um, I've made a little bit of a differentiator between the concept of a content creator versus a content entrepreneur. So just kind of giving you, filling you in a little bit on what I think that looks like. Um, lots of times we get so busy creating content that we forget the intention behind monetizing it. And so, like I say, really, really been focused this week on sharing and bringing guests in that can really speak to, you know, cre one, creating the content um, easier, faster, um, worthy of an audience uh, attraction model. Um, but also, you know, what's what's the monetary value of that? You know, how do you monetize? Um, so as you guys are coming in, just give me a quick shout out. Where in the world are you today? Um, just want to make sure everybody knows that we like every day we are doing giveaways. Um, today is no different. Um, we are so excited that we were blessed. I tell you, StreamYard has been so generous with us this, this week. Uh, we're giving away a lot of their swag. So you'll see throughout the course of today that we're, some of this stuff will be in the mix. And trust me, um, some of this stuff, I, I wear it daily. I mean, sometimes I think that's the only clothes I have. The, the, the sweatshirts I love, especially during the winter months, um, they're super soft and I wear them quite frequently. So um, definitely, definitely want to be in the running for that. So let me tell you how you end up winning if you are being eligible to win. Um, all you have to do is use the hashtag, hashtag video in down under in the comment area, y'all. So if you'll put in hashtag video in any comment, you will be eligible for the, the drawings. Now, you have to keep using your hashtag video quite frequently. The more, obviously, the more frequently you uh, comment, um, the more you have a chance of being picked up as a winner, okay? Well, you're already a winner, but you know what I mean. Um, also, if you know somebody that would benefit from this, feel free to tag them. Um, or if you just simply want to share this out, you know, sprinkle it out into the world, um, hit that S button and pass it along. We'd love to have as many people as we can, because I think today's content is going to be so, so great for so many of you guys. And I have some questions. Um, I always have questions. I, you know, I always love learning from other people who are doing amazing things, probably just like you do. Um, so if that's you um, and you want to know something, please, please, please ask questions. Um, we're going to pull in as many of them as we can. If we don't get around to ask, answering your specific question, we'll certainly circle back to it. But we love to get your questions. We want to be, we're here to serve. We're here to make sure that you leave here today um, with something that you can use. Okay. So definitely let us know. Um, I'm going to see who all's here. We have, we have some videos in the house. I see some people are definitely interested in Winnie. So that's great. And Elizabeth is here from Texas. Welcome. Welcome. Um, we have Jim who says, yep. I tell you, the sweatshirts are amazing guys. Rachel from South Hill. We've got um, Lynn from Rainy, Connecticut. Uh, Wanjira, I hope I'm saying that. I think I am. Montreal. Um, awesome. I'm so glad you guys are here. Lori from Vancouver. Um, Larry, dude, we have got to reconnect. Um, I, I, I love seeing you, um, your face when it comes through. I've, it's been so long since I've been live streaming that I've missed you. I hope you're doing well. And then we've got Knoxville, Tennessee in the house. Looks like we got Raleigh. We got, oh, I'm so excited to see so many people uh, and so many comments coming in. Okay, so I promised good things today. We have some really great guests today. We've had great guests all week, but I'm super excited about today because I think a lot of times I'll speak for myself, like 
some those perfectionists in the house. How many of you feel like you're a perfectionist? Don't raise your hand. It's okay if you feel like you're a perfectionist. Uh, when I first started live streaming, I was like, there is no way I am going to get in front of a camera when I have no script. Like, no. I mean, my team used to hate me on video days because I would record 50,000 times. That's an exaggeration, but a lot of times. And then I'd edit it to death, you know, trying to make it perfect. So when live video came around, I was like, yeah, there's just no way that's happening. That is just not me. And here we are. So, um, but if that's perfectionism is your thing and you want to have a more professional um, scripted um, piece of content, then you are in the right place today. All right. So, all right. Uh, let's see. Let me introduce you guys first to Jim. Jim Fuse. Jim is a retired Marine Lieutenant Colonel turned digital marketer, consultant, uh, speaker, live streamer, podcaster, uh, remote live stream and, vid and virtual event producer with over 30 years of business and social media experience. He fuses his experience as a, a military officer with next level digital marketing. He is the president of Fusion Marketing. Guys, put your hands together for Jim. Hey, Jim. Hey, Kim. Great to be here. Great to, great to, I, I'm excited about this. I mean, I've been using StreamYard since, gosh, I think uh, February of 2019. And it's amazing what they've done and yeah. continue to do with this platform to, and, you know, love how they stick to their you know three principles of ease of use professional looking streams and and this and then the uh, stream stability is is a uh, you know really it's important yeah yeah definitely well let me introduce uh chris and then we'll get to all the fun we're going to have today so chris is the chief content entrepreneur at castaway and i love that he calls himself a content entrepreneur because i do believe that is a definitely a differentiator from a content creator and he's on a mission to help entrepreneurs and business owners launch their own shows chris also has a, re a remote produced live um also has remote produced live events for clients such as Disney, you guys, IBM, Apple, StreamYard, United Nations Global Compact, MIT, Carta, Glassdoor, Toastmasters International. I mean, that's just quite a few like big names, right? Um, amazing. Uh, some of the folks that he's worked with. Um, he um, also has worked with Gary Vaynerchuk, Seth Godin, uh, Darren LaCroix, and the list goes on. So to say, you know, our guests today are like big deals, y'all. So please welcome Chris to the stage. Hey, hey, Chris. Hey, guys. Yeah. I'm only I'm I'm this much of a deal compared to you guys. Uh -huh. I'm, no, seriously, yeah. I'm very honored uh, to be here uh, and and be asked to be a part of Content Palooza. It reminded me of the summers when I go to Lollapalooza, and <laughs> go and watch bands like Tool and Rage Against the Machine. So, um, well, are we going to rock some binge worthy content to today, rock Kim? Some things. <laughs> okay. Yes, we are. Right. You know, that was the when we chose the word Palooza, the intent was to showcase a sense of fun, right? Like, you know, if we don't have fun in our business, then what, why are we doing it? That's it. <laughs> you That's know, it. so, you know, having that like a little bit of um, enthusiasm around what we do and, and showcasing that, that fun. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. and thankful that you guys said yes to, you know, being on the show today. So thank you. Our honor. Um, yes. Thank you. April says rage against the scream. Wow. <laughs> now I feel <laughs> old. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything's circular, right? Like things that we used to say, um, you know, when we were younger, um, I am a firm believer that they'll eventually circle back. And oh yeah, they're overrated. all coming back for sure. Oh, Just yeah. like Lifesavers, the candy, which we talked about before <laughs> yes. we went live, but they're coming back. That's a, that's a really good point. So all of you that are watching right now, this is not an age thing. We're not ageism in the here for any, but just, you know, but, um, how many of you remember the little, like they were a little book that had all the lifesavers in them, you know, and it folded over and you opened it up and then you had different flavors of, of lifesavers. Who remembers that? It's, I don't know if we are telling or telling our age or not, yeah, but pretty much. Well, I think that's the coolest thing. Like um, still a cool thing. It's like the big box of crayons, right? Like we had to have the big box of crayons when we went back to school. So <laughs> yeah. exactly so memorized all of the different colors of the uh of the crayons of the yeah, crayola definitely. crayons 
definitely. And, and, so, I, and ye yesterday, I, and I was thinking about sending it to you, Chris, because I know your your background, but I watched the first 12 minutes of MTV on a YouTube video. That was ooh. pretty wild. And yeah. of course, the first video they played was Video Killed the Radio Star. By the Buggles, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Well, let's dig in a little bit. I thought maybe I'd start with something um, that I think a lot of times when we're thinking about content creation, um, that sometimes we don't think through all the way. So the, and so the question is, like, can you walk us through, like, what is your content ideation look like on the front side? Is there like some research in it? Um, you know, how do you get your ideas for content? Um, I think that's usually the first place so many of us start. Like we have to have an idea for the content before we start creating it. So feel free, either one of you can jump in. Both of you give your perspective on this. Yeah, I mean, I could I could jump in really quickly. And I'll let I'll let Jim clean up the mess that I've left. But um, you know, for me and for the clients that I serve, it really starts with who you're speaking to. It's it's in. So if, if you know who you're talking to and who that person is that just can't get enough of the sort of medicine that you're giving and the, the, the solutions you're providing for them, I start with them because that is what provides your content. You think about if, you're, if your person is, has, has 12 minutes in the day for their commute or their, their run or their walk with their dog and they have an issue financially with something and you have... Uh, an idea that can solve that, you create something that is 12 minutes or one minute or something that they could have that they can take and go, oh, wow, that was cool. I need more of it. And then they watch another one or listen to another one. And then they watch and listen to another one. And before you know it, you're solving all kinds of problems. And you have what David Meerman Scott calls a, a super fan, right? And and those are people that just not only are, are you being a good human and helping people, right? But you're creating this person that just can't get enough of that. And so I start there. I start with identifying who it is that either me and, and who my business solves problems for or the people that I serve and their audience and their problems that they have. And that becomes the content. And that really drives it. And I'm not saying it makes any of this easy. This a lot of this stuff is is it's it's easy to jump off of the path and say, well, I like blenders. I don't want to talk about finances. And then then you're then you lose your audience. Right. You have to stay on the path and you have to continue to solve the, the problems. And like you said earlier, Kim, if it, it if you're not having fun doing it and you're not passionate about doing it, the content's going to suck anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have to you have to lean into something that you're really passionate about. And if you're passionate about helping humans doing it then that's where your content is is derived from. Does that does that answer the question at all? It does. Or? And okay. one thing that I I really picked up out of that too really obviously, you know, the understanding who your person is, that's big. But something else you said is problem solving content, like problem centric content. I've been my my content to profit uh, program is all about that because I think we've got to a place where just generic content anymore is losing its appeal, <laughs> you know, and so I think that people are just trying to find solutions to the things that they are looking for. So I love that you said it like that, you know, you know, just continue to solve their problems with great content. Um, as long as you know who you're talking to, you're going to be fine. I love that. So Jim, jump in. Yeah. yeah so, I so Chris has got it there on his shirt, right? He's a live solver. And I think, you know, that was one of the things that as we develop deal casters we really thought about is we were you know when we were live on amazon or even when we would say do recorded solving right because not everybody's going to catch you live uh you know what is it that what is the problem you're solving and i think so many people have to think about instead of selling what they're doing it's like how do you solve my problem and if you do that then i'm going to buy from you but i got to build that relationship and so i think when we're creating content whether it's you know, like talking about microphones or whatever, we're talking about how do we solve the person's problem of, as an example, having good audio. Because audio, I know we're sitting here doing a video show, is more important than the video because somebody may be walking around, you know, they're listening, but they're not actually watching the video at that time. And so we have to think about that. We have to think about also catching people right away. 
right? I think in the past, it was always like, I'm almost like, well, hi, I'm Jim Fuse and I do this and I do that. And well, I'm gone, right? I don't care. You got to get right to it. Like, hey, today we're going to tell you how to get great wireless video with the Shure Move mic. Oh, okay. I know what I'm going to get. Chris and I both get very frustrated when we've watched people who shall remain nameless, their video about how they're going to tell you something, tell you something, tell you something. And I just lost 10 minutes of my life and they didn't tell me anything yes. <laughs> other than to watch the next video. So I think that this, this new generation, and I've been talking with uh, the folks from uh, Relatable, which is a really exciting new product you guys will be hearing about more soon. Um, you know, we have our native analogs, which are, are us, right? We grew up before the internet. And now these this younger generation is native digital. So they're doing everything with smartphones, with video, and they, you know, call it short attention span theater. You know, I know we used to have Mystery Science Theater 3000, but, you know, they, you got to get to the point, you've got to solve their problem and then let them go because they got other things to do. Yeah. And I just like to tag on to that just a little bit. Um, I think that same message that you just said is applicable across our brand. You know, no more can we talk about ourselves on our website. It's not about what we do. It's about what problem do we solve for them? And they have to know in three seconds or less. So if your brand is like, oh, I help blah, 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 is what it is. It's like it's it's, you know, it's change, it build authority brand that's about the problems you solve. Don't go on and on about you because nobody cares about you, at, at least out the gate. You know, so you, you need to um, translate that or transfer that concept to everything you you do. It's like, how do I make that first impression? How do I hook them? Right. Um, around the problem that I solve. So getting clarity on that obviously is important too. So yeah, but I love doing that. that. Doing that planning of that content, it, it, I don't, you know, we're talking about, uh, what do we, what'd you call them? Uh, native analogs? Yes. Okay. I don't know if <laughs> I like harsh. that, yet, but I, you know, <laughs> I, I'm going to let that, I'm going to let that marinate a little bit, but it, you know, Kim, it's like, uh, what, what we used to call back in the day on broadcast radio, and I think they still do it on television, on broadcast television, it's called station identification. Mm. And you, if you treat your content, whether it's the snackable stuff and, you know, or even the long form stuff, you may have three seconds in a one minute YouTube short. You may only have about five or 10 seconds in a YouTube video that goes on for an hour. And so you think you can just fire up the thing and just kind of like hang out and do whatever before you get into content starting at minute eight, you've lost a ton of people. So we look at it from a standpoint of station identification. I mean, think Kim, like when you, when you get on a plane, right? And you sit down and you hear this boom, boom, uh, you know, welcome to flight uh, 777, you're, uh, you're on your way to Las Vegas. And you're like, oh crap, I'm supposed to be going to Akron. What do you do? You get up and you walk off the plane and you go and you find your plane that you're supposed to be on. Station identification does that for people. They say, okay, I'm in the right place. This is exactly what I needed right now. And then when you tell the people, hey, this is the content that we're going to deliver for you, then give it to them. Don't worry about, you know, saying, hey, I'm Chris Stone. I'm the chief content entrepreneur. Like no one, like Jim said, no one cares. On down the line, when you've gained people's, you know, likability and trust and all those good things that we all know we're supposed to get as, as good entrepreneurs, they'll figure it out. You know, we've already got people here in the chat that are asking, you know, where to find our stuff. Okay, we'll, we'll let you know. Hang out. I mean, you'll, you'll be able to find us. You can Google our names and you'll find us because we were good about that, you know, SEO thing. So, but hang out here and listen to what Kim and, and Jim and I have to say to you. And hopefully that can serve you better. But I think station identification, Kim, is huge for content creators because they forget about it. And if they take their content and they just throw it into these pieces of software that have AI and they just spit out that content, that content's not thinking about that. They're just yeah. trying to they're just trying to grab something that might they think that they fed this algorithm that's going to grab people's attention, but yeah. it's not. And you, are, as a content entrepreneur, need to take that extra step and add that human element to be able to hook it because you have an idea who your ideal avatar is. Yeah, so good. Which kind of leads me into my next question a little bit here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've talked about the hook, right? The hook is so powerful on the front side and just getting to it, right? Um, what, what strategies do you have to keep people 
you know, from the beginning, um, you hook them, obviously, but how do you keep them uh, to, throughout the course of the content? And more importantly, and this is like a big thing that I've been preaching for a while now when it comes to video content, what do you do at the end? Like meaning, do you have a call to action? Are you moving them from social media to someplace you own? Um, I, it's most of the content that I, uh, either do, uh, you know, make myself or I do for others has to do with taking a longer form interview, like kind of what we're doing here and using that and trying my best to create a story within 59 seconds or less, mm -hmm. which is incredibly difficult. Yes. And YouTube, if you're listening, please extend that 59 seconds. <laughs> um, it would, it would make my life so much easier. Um, but you know, the really the the ending part i'll start there the ending part is really just i just feel like when it comes to the snackable stuff and and that short form content i feel like maybe it's a donut at the end where it's just kind of saying this is who we are you know and it's not a you know grab this and make sure you check out my course and here's my book and like again sort of you know back to what jim mentioned earlier at that point like if they really want it they're going to find it Right. And so I think from the snackable content perspective, you can do like, especially on YouTube, you can you can put an associated longer form video that they can click on. And we've seen some some activity there from uh, from YouTube shorts. But I think, st it, again, if you're focused on the ideal uh, listener and they, they can't get enough of it, then you'll find a way to kind of weave that in without it looking super salesy and, and kind of creepy. You have to understand yeah. sometimes. That, that, that person, especially on shorts, they're watching this thing for the first time. This is the first time they have no idea who you are and they saw something that said, hey, this might solve my problem. So if that's the case, the first thing you, you don't wanna, you know, you don't, you, you, you don't wanna be inviting them up to the hotel room before you bought them dinner, right? You gotta, <laughs> you, 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 have to, you have to give them something and then eventually, you know, they'll, they'll learn to trust you and either, you know, buy what you got or not. Uh, or and you don't necessarily have to take them to the hotel room, okay? That's but right. yeah, That's right. That's right. <laughs> but um, I, I I think I totally agree, especially on short form content. Um, you have a very small window of opportunity to make an impression, and that that's really where the binge worthy construct comes from, honestly. Because if you start to hook people on your content, that's why I think short form content is so powerful because they watch the thirty seconds or the minute or whatever. Oh wow, that was good. Like. What else have they got, you know, and they start like, you know, follow because it's short content. It doesn't take them long to, to consume more. And the more they consume it, the more they're inclined to pay attention to other forms of content that you might have. Um, so I, I love that you you said that. I'm, I'm going to take just a second and we're going to do a quick giveaway, you guys. Ooh, so oh, our yes. give our first giveaway. Yeah. Rubber hands is going to be at what we call a swag pack. So you're going to get this lovely little mug. And I tell you, I'm using mine right now. You're going to get a StreamYard sticker for those of you who, who love to put those on your laptop and also a StreamYard hat. So that's going to be our first giveaway. Um, and if you've been on, like I said, I got my, and I think Chris has his uh, StreamYard mug too. I love mine because it fits under my um, espresso machine. You know, some, <laughs> some cups are too tall, um, some mugs and they don't fit. So that is, I'm going to pull, uh, that's annoying to me. Uh, the fact that this actually works is awesome. So you have just a few seconds to use that hashtag um, uh, event, I'm sorry, video, hashtag video. And I'm going to hit the button. So just oh, one, yes. two, three, so four, satisfying. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Time's up. Now I can't win. I, I've been having a habit of winning. <laughs> so. Can I do sound effects? Yes. ASMR fans. <laughs> okay. Rachel is the winner. All right. Yay. Congratulations, Rachel. 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 So Rachel, you are today's winner um, and exciting to have that. Um, I, we're excited that you won. Um, I'm going to set this drawing up again for the next one. Guys, use the hashtag video if you would like to win. It's not not too awful hard. And we're going to be giving away, I think, maybe a sweatshirt and some other mm -hmm. stuff. So 
make sure you use the hashtag. We would love it. Now, we also have a couple of questions and I wanted to uh, scroll back up. I'm going to try to find those real quick. Good. We love because questions. Because I thought they were a great question. Uh, a couple of great questions we had. Okay. Here's one from Jenny. She said, do you recommend having different channels on YouTube for different themes or different like niches? I, I think is what she's saying. Or have one branded channel with different playlists? Mm, good yes. question, guys. Yeah. The answer is yes. And yes. I think it's so easy to, it's so easy to, um, you know, to, to create a YouTube channel. Uh, what's not easy is to start from zero. And I understand mm -hmm. that, but trust, uh, trust us is that, you know, when you start creating this, this lane for yourself, and we've done that with, with, with deal casters and focusing on, you know, podcasting, live streaming items, and that could be anything for your studio. And I know we're going to touch on that later, you know, microphones and interfaces and kind of that, that, you know, trying to not fear the, the, the mind junk that comes about starting a show because you can't figure out what microphone or, or what headphones or why you should do this or how much money do I need for this, that, and the other. That's our lane for that. And that was, that was built sort of on a, an Amazon show that we did, which, uh, which we started on YouTube. But because we were live on Amazon and we're more than just microphone guys, we also like to cook and we also like, you know, things like, you know, stuff around the house and planting things that go outside and all kinds of stuff like that. We started doing videos on Amazon for that as well, because as content entrepreneurs, we saw that these product videos were also making money and helping other people with solutions for other things besides just microphones and things like that. So we started doing that and lo and behold, we can't put a garden <laughs> item on deal casters. That's lame. Like, and you, the, the people that are on that channel, let me just tell you this. And Kim, you probably know this as well on YouTube. You're more than likely going to get a comment about something you did wrong more so than you did right. And that's kind of the way, so that's kind of the way that works. So we created another YouTube channel called men about the house. And you could go to YouTube and watch that. But, and all it was was a place for us to put our Amazon videos that weren't tech related. And it's already gotten a number of subscribers and, you know, is, is on its way to, to monetization as well. So I think if you have passions for other things besides whatever podcast you're doing or whatever, you know, whatever is related to you and your entrepreneurial journey, you have other things, I would definitely uh, focus on making another channel for that. Um, and, you know, just kind of seeing where, where things go, because that sometimes diversifying your, your creativity like that can help you. One can help the other and polish the other in terms of what you might be doing for this. You, you might be able to apply to something else. Does that, does that yeah. answer the question? I, you know, what, what, um, let's see, was it yesterday or maybe it was the day before? Um, we had some great questions and the, it seemed like every time we answered it, the, the response was, it depends. You yeah. know, and the reality is it depends. Sure. <laughs> you know, I think sometimes with um, when we're thinking about the 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 um, the many things that we have interest in, usually there are a maraud of things that we have an interest in where also I'd like to flip that just real quick. And I don't want to spend too awful much time with this. Think about your audience because mm -hmm. the reality is they're interested in multiple things too. So like if you sure. have a, an audience that is, you know, mostly women, for example, well, and you're a business coach, um, they're probably very interested in the, the business aspects. They are trying to learn from you, but guess what? They buy makeup and they do their hair and they buy things for their garden and they like to read or, you know, fill in the blanks. So, so sometimes there's other opportunities to present things that are in alignment with your person, mm -hmm. um, you know, but with you guys, I think the differentiator, um, as I see it, just again, looking at it from the outside in, you have a very distinct brand in deal casters that was tech focused. So when you started throwing in other things, they're like, what, what's going on here? Like, you know, this right. isn't, it's not the same lane. Right. So sometimes if your lane is so very specific that, you know, it messes with people's minds when you start introducing other things, it won't go, you know, it just doesn't work. But sometimes you can weave it in, I think. It just depends on your audience. So it goes back to what you said right at the very beginning, Chris. Know your person. Know that person. If you yeah. know that person, all things start to come into alignment a little more clear. So, yeah. um, and, and Chris, too. Like Chris, as an example, has been doing a lot with Descript. 
And that doesn't necessarily fall into deal casters in the sense because it's not a software that's sold on Amazon. So he's putting it on his business channel, Cast Ahead, because that's one of the things that he offers to clients. I've done some videos on my Fusion Marketing channel where I'm talking about like LinkedIn or or other things like that. So I think what you have to remember is YouTube is a search engine. And if you start putting too many different things on your channel, it then YouTube's not really sure what your channel is. So I think right. that's the other thing to consider. So yes, sometimes playlists work. I think they're a good idea from a um, you know organizational standpoint. And then you have to remember as well, uh, you know, even like with this live video, once it's done, if you don't put it on a playlist, it now kind of disappears into this tab called live videos, and people don't even realize you went live. So you've got to keep up with some of these changes, but, uh, you know, it depends is so true in so many things in life and solving mm -hmm. problems. Well, especially when it comes to marketing, because sometimes you think, you know, the answer and you go forth and do it. And then you're like, well, that didn't work. Like, why didn't that work? You know? And sometimes it's just simply because we don't think it through. And most importantly, I think the, the, the times that I have done things that didn't um, work either for a client or for myself, um, was because I, it all circled back to know thy client, know thy person. You know, we didn't look at the at the person and what they really cared about as much as we should have. You know, what was the real problem that they wanted solved? Yeah. So um, I, there is a lot to be said for just simply, you know, understanding your person. So let's, uh, so Jim, let me ask this question. So what are some like, you know, for somebody who is maybe wanting, they're the perfectionist, they want the pre-recorded content, um, they're going to put it up on YouTube, they're going to do the, you know, the short content, whatever format it is. Like, so what are some like recording and like maybe pre-editing tips that you could give that would help people, um, you know, have that polished professional look? Well, for, first of all, I, I think that we've gotten to an age where you can really keep it a lot simpler than you realize. I mean, because Chris and I both, you know, we have to be careful about watching anything Doc Rock does because you get what we call gas, gear acquisition syndrome, and feel like you got to buy all this newest, latest, and greatest stuff. When the reality is that most smartphones today are more than enough. I mean, even to use them as a webcam, as opposed to feel like, oh, I've got to go buy this webcam or this, that webcam. Um, and, but then just, you know, getting a microphone. And like I was talking about earlier, right in here, I've got two wireless microphones from Shure. They're brand new Move Mic. It works off of Bluetooth. Uh, they've got a proprietary thing. So you can have two microphones at once up to 100 feet away, line of sight. So I can record anywhere with just a phone, a tripod, and microphones, I can go landscape, I can go vertical, then I can bring it into an editing tool like Descript, or I can take that B-roll, use it in StreamYard, and stream it out if I wanted to as part of a live stream, or you know, stream it as if it, it was live. But instead of getting all worked up about, oh, I've got to have this and that and the other, if it's a short video, get to the point, get your message out. You know, Chris and I, and, and Chris was really opened my eyes to this, you know, because I did with Tim Sohn, the Tim and Jim show for years. And so many of us are guilty of, we produce a show, but then it's like, we're off to the next show. And it's like, you got all this great content that if you just sliced up some of those key moments into, you know, 60 second or less, or as Chris said, how, how about a little bit longer YouTube, um, that then allows people to say, you know what, that's really interesting. I want to go watch the rest of that and learn more. So I think the perfectionist in us has to get over that because even I think when you hear sometimes how people spend hours and hours editing a 10 minute video, I think the reality is that people like the realism more. And so I think you can go a lot of times just go with that first take. This is a live video. We can't do it over, right? This what is perfect say, for Angela's what, comment right there. Yeah. She's like, you know, is, does it have to be professional looking? And you're just, you just answered that question. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> so true, right? <laughs> what is professional looking? Do, am right. I professional looking? I got a t-shirt on, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's about making sure people can hear you clearly mm -hmm. and making sure people can see you clearly, you clearly, mm -hmm. right? And so if you want to... I, I mean, how many times do we jump on a Zoom call and people aren't turning their cameras on? Mm -hmm. And I think, to me, that's not professional. I think, I think you, have to, you have to be ready. 
right? You have to like, especially as an entrepreneur and you're, you're like, could this turn into something like, let's, let's show respect. And, and if that means being professional, it doesn't mean I'm, I'm going to put a tie on, you know, um, or, or, or something like that. But I, I think it's, it's about presenting yourself to where you can be heard and understood. That's the first thing we have to do is be heard and understood. And that means great audio. And that doesn't mean expensive audio. That means finding some fluffy stuff to put in your room, get a dynamic microphone, get it off of your desk because you start tapping on your desk and you've got a blue Yeti sitting on a, on a, um, on a stand that sits on your desk, that thing's going to pick it up. Right. And so you just get a light in front of you. So you don't look like you're in the witness protection program, get your laptop up and eye level so that you're, you're not staring up someone's nostrils and seeing their ceiling fan spinning above them. Like those are, none of those things can cost you much at all. You know, you, we won't hesitate to buy our kid an Xbox, but we won't spend half that to get our virtual presentation to where people can hear and understand what we're saying and see us without it looking like we got a thumbprint on our laptop. And so that is folks that those are, every time we go live on Amazon, we say that. And we don't say, hey, buy the Shure SM7B microphone, which is $400 and it's the one Joe Rogan has. That's not gonna make you better, right? You gotta graduate to that point. Go and watch our old videos. We had you know, microphones that weren't, there were $50 that we used. We understood how to use them, how to treat our rooms properly and to be able to present what we have. Is that professional? I don't know, maybe. Um, I think it's more respectful to the audience that they could trust what we were talking about, that we knew what we were talking about, and then, you know, be able to, to solve their problems from there. I love that you said that. And I will just, from my perspective, like I had to build that space yeah. um, it's because I am not, um, I'm not an on the go creator. I have to have a space that I can just sit down and create because I know myself. It goes back to know that, know that uh, person, but also know thyself. Yep. You know, if you, if, if all the stuff feels cumbersome to you and you have to drag out a tripod and I get that it's nice if that's your, if that, if that's what you can do, I just know that I struggle to do it like that. So I have a cockpit. That's what I call it. So I have my <laughs> lights, my, you know, whatever, and I can just sit down and, and do my thing, you know, so that might be you. Um, and so I, I don't think, I think ultimately it's what makes it work for you. You have to be, if you, if it's not, if it's going to be cumbersome for you, you're not going to do it. Right. I mean, that's going to be the reality of it. So yeah, I agree that sound is probably the most important. If we had to rank it, probably sound way, even before video, I've done some lives where my video was so super fuzzy, but people hung in there cause they could hear it, you know? So it's, yeah, it, there's just lots of factors around this. We had another question from Elizabeth. Um, she said, is it possible to monetize a new YouTube channel based on other people's YouTube content? Um, what do you think about that? Like, that's kind of an interesting perspective. I've heard a lot of people do it, but mm, what is your thoughts? I think I, you know, it, so as I understand it, like using, if you're using somebody else's content in your own video and posting on your channel or uh, I guess the difference would be sort of like when Jim and I do an interview and it's on someone else's channel, we put it on our channel as a, in a playlist, like Jim and Chris's interviews. There's a difference there. I think when you're doing the latter where, which is what we do every time we um, are, are doing some sort of video interview and it's available on YouTube, we find that link and we, we put it on our channel. It's, it's sort of like pin it on our channel to kind of say, hey, go to Kim Garst's uh, channel. This is where, we're, where our interview is. And that's going to create um, traffic on Kim's channel, not on our channel. So are we going to get monetized from, you know, from that? No, but we're serving the people that might go to our channel that may be interested in an interview and driving traffic to Kim's channel. Taking someone else's content and making that sort of your own um, and, and doing something. I mean, I suppose if you're doing something creative with it, it's almost like I, I, I equate everything back to music, Kim, since I spent 28 years at, uh, with, with Sony, but it's like sampling, right? And so if you could do something creative with it and you're, and you're not breaking the law in terms of copyright, um, then I, I guess that's okay. But, you know, we have a lot of, we get a lot of copyright strikes of people that are just take our content and create a channel based on 
Like we do a bunch of Amazon videos and all of a sudden we'll get a little copyright message from YouTube saying, hey, here's 16 people who stole your video. And so we just go and we strike it and say, create your own stuff. That's what we took yeah. our time to create. And so yeah. I'm not sure if that answers the question, but monetizing from someone else's content feels a little like, let's, let's try to carve our own path. If you're doing something creative with it and people are drawn to it and you're, you're not breaking any copyright laws, then I suppose that's okay. Yeah, I, I would almost say that if you're gonna use somebody else's content, I would approach them like, hey, we'd like to use your content to do this because to Chris's point, it could very much come back that, you're going to get taken down because you're, you know, hey, you didn't have permission to use my content. Um, and I, so I think you have to be careful. And I don't know, too, Chris, I know you probably have, too, where people are like live streaming, say, real world events or, you know, uh, other shows and kind of analyzing like, well, here's what happened. Adding on this value show. to it. Yeah. Um, Perspective. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and yeah. I think sometimes that's, I think that's a fine line. I, I wonder sometimes if some of them are going to get, uh, you know, shut down at some point because they maybe didn't have permission to share it. Cause you know, like even the NFL says you can't, you know, use their content without permission. So can I sit there and like replay, uh, you know, a football game and talk about what went right, what went wrong. So I think, uh, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a fine, line. It a fine line. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, because it really, I guess it would depend. It goes back to it depends. Like it depends mm -hmm. on like what what your intention is with it, how you're creatively using it. Do you have permission to use it? Um, you know, there's some variables to the to the response to the the answer to that. Honestly, so hopefully that helped. Um, so, Jim, c curious about like how do you plan for and maybe incorporate visual elements like B roll or graphics or slides or other things to make the flow it do you storyboard like how difficult because when i hear storyboard i'm like <laughs> you know so um so i'm just curious as to how you know what what would you suggest for other people to because th those are i think those are attention grabbers too or, or it keeps people's flow based on the interruption of of the video right so yeah. just curious as to how you how you would suggest yeah others i, I think that. i think you know chris you know, when we first started deal casters was really good about this creating the whole idea of we call it pattern interrupt, right? Because at some point, if people just continue to see the same view and 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 nothing changes, it's almost like, I don't know, maybe you get eye fatigue, mental fatigue. So you want to change things up. And so what a lot of this software allows you to do now as well is, you know, instead of maybe having you know you talking you bring in a graphic or you bring in a photo and you just literally let it play as a photo for a few seconds and then you go back to maybe having you on there so you i think some of it is like whatever i add visually is it going to add value to the story i'm telling or or the thing i'm trying to solve Mm, yeah, and that's yeah, really it good. It goes back, Kim, to what we said earlier. It's like if you know your audience, and if you if you're so crazy with the pattern interrupts every five seconds, but your your audience is like, L listen, this is I'm I'm going to end up with a twitch for the rest of my life. Stop <laughs> doing this, <laughs> you know. Right? You have to you have to understand like it, it, this content is for this type of person, and if you have to it, like, especially in the short form stuff. And you see the stuff that that does resonate with with a particular audience can ha may have to be like like you said grab their attention in three seconds station identification start giving them the content because people believe it or not and i know it blows people's minds they're looking for their news they're looking for solutions that are takes hours for us to to present in less than a minute and so it's like you're not you're never going to be able to do that so don't don't try to solve the, you know get world peace in a minute right but give them something that allows them to eventually get to the 30 videos that you uh that you have and then you've got you've got super fan it's it's incredibly difficult to do with sh with short form but that's uh, nowadays everyone's looking for everything uh on TikTok, on youtube on instagram mm -hmm. reels like that's that's what they're looking to go and get their that's, solutions yeah 
Yeah, this short form content is so, so powerful for so many reasons. Um, so we're going to do the last giveaway real quick. And then I have a really good last question for you guys. So um, let's see. Our giveaway is going to be uh, actually, are we actually, we're two, are we behind? We are behind you guys. I'm sorry, so we're gonna, blabbing. Uh, <laughs> so sorry, we're going to have to do this one and then we're going to have one more. So we're going to be giving away, I totally lost track of time, uh, giving away a hoodie and one of the insulated mugs. You guys, both of these are amazing. So I'm going to quickly add this up here. We're going to do the, the giveaway. I am behind the curve here. So let's see who wins. Oh That's a pattern interrupt, by the way. Yes. yes. ASMR. All right. Lori is the winner of yeah, the, Lori. And right, the, Lori. the insulated um, mug. What does Lori's shirt say? I can't quite see it. It says, I, have so, I don't know. Now. Well, it says, hey, Lori, now. Us, hey, now. Oh, hey, now. Hey, now. Okay. So, hey, now. Well, now. So real quick, I forgot to tell uh, the last person who won. You guys, go over to kimgarst.com forward slash winner. Give us your de details down there um and like t-shirt size or sweatshirt size or whatever we need a mailing address as well if you want to get the goodies okay so cast ahead. yeah oh there you go <laughs> okay okay so we got another question that we're going to give do a giveaway and then i'll i'll uh, they're going to tell you guys where because everybody's already been asking where to connect so that's going to be we're going to talk fast and we're going to get the rest of this in <laughs> So, so both of you guys, I have a question and feel free to give your, each of you give the answer to this. So what are your top three recommendations for creators who are looking to develop a, a sustainable process for creating pre-recorded videos, uh, whether it's short form or maybe even a little longer, they're going to do it for YouTube. So top three tips, what would you say? I, I would say, uh, First of all, keep it simple. And so one of the things we do is I have a, I'm not using it today, but I have a boom arm that allows me to have an overhead camera, smartphone. I connect it to my computer and that allows me to have that overhead look and I can record it so I can use it, whether it's an unboxing or something like that. Uh, don't feel like you got to buy uh, expensive gear, you know, start and build up like Chris talked about earlier, how we did with deal casters. And the third thing is be consistent and consistency doesn't mean daily. It can be whatever works for you, whether it's once a week, you know, try to batch your content, maybe pick one day a week to do it. Because I think if you try to do too much, you get overwhelmed. Good tips. So what do you say, Chris? I have a secret for all of your viewers and listeners, Kim, everybody lean in. Are you ready? Yes. This is a stream yard feature and I'm renaming it. It's called time travel. <laughs> Okay. It's StreamYard time travel. Uh, Jim kind of alluded to it, and I do this uh, myself, and I do it with the clients that I serve at, at Castat. And it is batching the content, but the beautiful part about StreamYard that, that a lot of people don't realize, and it's why I use it and predominantly with every client that I serve, is that you go live, right? And that's a big component and it's very simple and it's, and it, it's so trustworthy. It never fails me. Uh, not only that, but when you are done with the show, you get all of the isolated video and audio files. So you can repurpose all you want and plop it into Descript and create vertical videos and, and create an audio podcast. You can do all the things with it. It's, it's great. But if you want to keep it simple and a lot of times as creators, we don't always feel creative. Right. And, and it's like, oh, crap, I have to I, I set myself a time block on Wednesday morning to record and do my live video. But you just don't feel like it. You just don't feel like doing it or a guest doesn't show up or all of those things that happen when you're trying to record a live video, you time travel. And what you do is when you are feeling creative, maybe at the end of another show, you fire up StreamYard and you do a recorded video of your show. Just, you know, just like you normally would. You do your intro video if you got an intro video, you do all of the stuff and you do that video and you let it sit on StreamYard's cloud. And then when you don't feel like doing a video, 
you all you have to do is go up and schedule it and StreamYard just does your live video for you and you've done it two weeks ago it's content you've done two weeks ago so like if you're going on vacation for two weeks or like i said you just don't feel like it or you don't have a guest that shows up every one of my clients has up to five different recorded videos that sit on the cloud that when a guest doesn't show up or they can't make it or they have a keynote speech that they have somewhere else and they have to be in cleveland ohio and they can't be in their cockpit they just say do this particular video that we recorded last month do this do this do this you time travel and then you don't have to worry about it and honestly kim it's i don't as a as a remote producer i barely even look at it it's so trustworthy that and i feel like it's the best way to do it because you're not brought like this is being broadcast from your computer kim going up to Streamyard and then back out to the world when you time travel i'm definitely changing that when you time travel it's just coming from Streamyard out to the world so there's no you don't have to worry about the bandwidth or any issues or sound or audio or whatever that recorded video is just being broadcast out to the world so. or one other i want to tag on to this they have the local recordings and you guys yes. i haven't been paying so much attention to that but yesterday i downloaded those the individual files for our guests yesterday and then i did a side-by-side -side comparison and it was stunning the difference between the live feed to your point mm -hmm. that goes up to Streamyard and then back out to the world. One, um, I think there's a there's a lot of tech that goes into whether it's awesome or not. But the nice part is you could use those local recordings to your point. The quality is going to be higher, and it's just going to go from Streamyard to the world, which is going to eliminate that back and forth pull that your internet is going to which is you know pulls it down the quality of it down so there's there's value to that that strategy he just shared on multiple fronts is kind of what i'm saying is the quality of it if you use the local recordings is just so much richer um and so time traveling allows you to be consistent right so a mm -hmm. lot of people we we haven't even talked about consistency which is so yeah. important for for uh for content creators and i'm, I'm sure I've, sorry if i repeated any content that's uh, you know been spoken about this whole week on content palooza with rage against the machine and that is like if you know it it allows you to be consistent when you don't feel like it somebody doesn't show up it's like if you wanted to do weekly you don't have to do weekly but you want to be consistent for the person that you're delivering content for because if you don't start you don't keep showing up for them whether it's weekly bi-weekly monthly whatever it is they're going to wonder where you are and they're going to forget about it and move on and time traveling allows you to to stay consistent. So I, ha I, I lied. I have one more question. <laughs> we'll do the giveaway. So I didn't mean to lie, but um, we'll just keep this to one thing. Uh, so what is your number one monetization strategy when it comes to, to video? Because, you know, we, we, again, we're always talking about like, how do, how, how do we create money from our content? So like outside of creating content for others, you know, as a service provider, which could be your answer. Um, but like, how do we make money with our, with our video content? Jim, do you, I know, would, you want to take yeah, that? Yeah, I'll, I'll take, I would say, um, affiliate links. I, it doesn't matter if it's Amazon, if it's StreamYard, you know, people usually want to know, Hey, how did you do that? This is my tool. Here's the link. They could buy it without your link. That's fine. But there's a lot of people that monetize YouTube using affiliate links. It's not by getting to the thousand you know, subscribers, 4,000 view hours. And so there's so many companies and products that you probably love that you could talk about all day, get, become an affiliate and you could make some revenue off of that. And I think, uh, that's probably the quickest way. It, it's not necessarily going to be huge, but you just never know. Yeah. Yeah. I dovetail on that. I mean, you know, affiliate revenue is making money while you sleep and it may be, you know, 20 cents one day and it may be $200 the next. You don't really know. And it's, it's, it's inconsistent, but it is a stream of revenue and it's not just products too. It's software. I mean, any software worth a spit is going to have some sort of affiliate program, you know, StreamYard I know does and, and, you know, Descript and all of these programs that we used to create our content has an affiliate program. Some of them are really, really good. Uh, yeah. So it's going to end up paying for all of this stuff that you're, you're paying for. So it helps offset like your podcast hosting charge and your, uh, you know, your StreamYard uh, 
uh, subscription and all of these things. But I, I would say this too, is that, um, you know, Jim and I have had opportunities by going live and by doing these things from other brands. So there are, you know, but if you don't get yourself out there and you don't become an expert in your field and you don't get that gain that and garner that credibility by, by being on shows like content Palooza and things like that, then no one knows who you are. No one is ever going to know who you are. Right. And yeah. so you have to do that. And all of a sudden we start getting emails and calls from companies that were like, Holy crap. I can't believe that we just got a call from this person and they want to work with us. And um, I think that's that's the other way that that has has helped us to to monetize. It's not just getting free product. That's you know, that, I mean, it doesn't doesn't mean anything to us. It, it yeah. like the products we talk about are products we already use. Mm -hmm. And um, when a when a company comes to us and they say, "Listen, we want to work with you because you already know how to use our stuff." And that's, you know, you just have to prove yourself as an expert in order to, to garner that kind of monetization. Yeah. And especially, you know, if those of you who don't have an audience, one of the things that's super powerful about affiliate marketing and specifically leveraging places like Amazon or Etsy or I mean, not that Etsy is necessarily a um, uh, a video platform, but they have a traffic. They're a traffic source. Oh, yeah. YouTube is a traffic source because content can be found there. You know, Amazon has a traffic source. So you don't have to have an audience to be able to monetize. Yes. So you just have to create the content um, and get busy with it. So just just playing that possibility, because I think sometimes we put ourselves in a box and think, oh, well, I don't have an audience. Therefore, I can't make I can't make any money. And and I don't think that's true uh, today. So we're going to we're going to do one more giveaway. And this one's a doozy. So I'm going to give you one last little bit to use the hashtag video down under because you're going to want to win this. This is uh, a year's Ooh. worth of yeah, StreamYard Pro. Y'all are looking at this like, I want to win this, right? Like, <laughs> so Man, it's that hashtag. Yeah, you know, ready. So everybody's put, I'm like, can I win oh, no. this? Um, it's hashtag but, video, right? Yeah, yes, hashtag, hashtag video. Um, and again, real quick, put your hashtag video in because this is a, this is a giveaway. I'm going to pull up our screen and we're, you got just a second. Two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. We're gonna hit drop. <laughs> Kim oh, Garth sorry. is the winner. I, I won twice yesterday, y'all. Oh, I've done that before, yeah. Uh, Woohoo! All right, Elizabeth. all right, Elizabeth. That they're, you're gonna win. Um, it it moves like you know. You're like, okay, that's the winner, and then you know it rolls forward. But she's the Elizabeth, big winner. You yes. are a big winner today, girl. So go make sure you go over to kimgurst.com forward slash winner. If you were not a winner today in the in the in the, the swag department, you are a winner. I just want you to know that. But you can still win by simply going over to kimgurst.com forward slash streamyard. You can get a 30 day trial for free. Um, so definitely pick, I mean, use the tool and check it out. See, like a lot of everything that we've talked about this week can be done and so much more using this tool. So go grab a, a free account and, and try it out. I mean, what does it hurt, right? So, but the kicker is you have to, tr you have to get busy. You know, it doesn't right. matter if you're paying for it or if you're getting it for free. If you're not using it, it's like dust on the shelf, right? That's it. Just a second. One last thing. All right. So, <laughs> So guys, Jim, we'll start with you. So where can everybody connect with you? Well, I used to say you could connect with me on Twitter and you probably still could, but I'm just not out there as much. So <laughs> LinkedIn, uh, Jim Fuse, and then uh, love with people to follow uh, follow me on YouTube at both you know Dealcasters and also at uh, Fusion Marketing. And I'll just drop that, you guys, Fusion, it's uh, with an H. So FusionMarketing.com. Make sure you follow Jim. Uh, definitely Dillcasters, guys. Amazing content over there that these uh, these gentlemen are creating. So um, check that out. All right. Jim, one thing they did, I did see a question come through for the link that you mentioned on the mic. So if you want to make sure you circle back, because I would like that link myself. So if you you can circle sure. back to that, that would be great. We can do that. And then Chris, where is where do everybody where's where can we connect with you? 
Kim, thank you so much for having us on. This has been a blast. I hope we didn't blab too much. I know we were, you know, but uh, this has been so much fun. I just, uh, we're honored to be able to, uh, to be here and serve your audience. My name is Chris Stone and my company is called Cast Ahead. And you can find me at castahead.net. And if you want to connect with me on uh, on all the tubes, I'm I'm everywhere. I even have a Pinterest page, believe it or not. It is uh, chrisstone.contact, and uh, that's where you can connect with me wherever you want to. If it's LinkedIn or or Facebook or uh, whatever thing Elon Musk is going to come up with next. So. <laughs> You know, it's so fascinating because I lost my, I'll just say this real quick because I know everybody's time is, is uh, limited, but I lost my Twitter account for about six months, couldn't get in. And so I, I just wasn't using it, like, right? I couldn't get in to use it. So I was like, well, it's a whole long story, but um, fascinating shifts in six months with, I don't know if anybody's been paying attention, but there's a lot of new features on, on the, on the X. So some of which are kind of intriguing. Um, so if you haven't been over to X lately, you might want to check it out um, and see what the the, the Hubble Baloo is. It is very much still a tech related platform. A lot of tech related uh, uh, tweeters, tweeters, Xers. Excellent. I don't know. Like, right? I don't know. Like, this is becoming very quickly uncomfortable. I'm seriously, not try right? To pronounce it. Seriously, <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you guys so much for spending thank some you. time with us and sharing thank your you, expertise Kim. today. And I want to thank all of you guys that are watching and have been with us today. Thank you so much uh, for being with us. Time is valuable. When you spend time with us, we really, really uh, honor and appreciate that. So take care of yourselves. Um, don't forget tomorrow we're uh, going to be here same time, same place. We're going to be talking about to repurpose or not to repurpose. Mm, so the there's places for both. So what makes the most sense? So definitely uh, don't miss out on tomorrow. Same time, same place. We'll see you tomorrow again. Take care. God bless.